ever since forever, I have always identified, as probably all of you have, with your own personal labels. So, you know, I was a straight A student. I was, I don't, it doesn't mean anything, it's like ridiculous, but I was, you know, and that meant something to me. And I was, you know, the gay boy or the gay man or, you know, the college athlete or the actor, the writer, director, producer, teacher, whatever. And I just started thinking about these labels are so finite. And I started thinking about, well, what if we just started to expand beyond it? And I think in terms of acting, it could be really powerful if you just shift the paradigm and stop telling yourself that you're just an actor. All those things may be true at one level because you orient out in the world based on how you identify yourself, but they are all contained within a bigger part of who you are. So what happens if the next time, try this on for size, the next time somebody asks you, well, what do you do for a living? You say, I'm a storyteller. Sit with it. I'm a storyteller. That's what you are. Kids, you're not just a story. Listen, to me, your entire, the best story you're ever telling and weaving and writing chapters of, consciously and unconsciously, is your own life. And spoiler alert, last time I checked, the ending chapter, it's all going to work out. <laughs> it is collective breath. So the, 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 the most badass story you're ever going to tell is your own story. So I started thinking about it, like we get, you know, that term acting and being an actor can sometimes be very, very limited. Also because, of, <clears throat> think about it, the way we tell stories in life, you, you grew up hearing stories, you told yourself stories, you never even checked the, you know, the actual purpose or the truth of these stories, you hear other people tell stories, you listen to stories, whether you believe them or not, you also... In the internet age, we also take on stories that other people are telling us about us, we give too much energy to. So to me, what's interesting is our whole lives are really a part of being storytellers. And I thought, my God, it's so powerful as an actor to think about going into a room, in your work, on a movie, whatever it is. How could you ever be wrong? Think about it. If you are weaving the story that you have to tell, meaning script, whatever, on a job, a TV show, whatever. But you're interweaving that with your personal story, your narrative, because you are. So you can never be wrong. If you go into an audition and you choose to, this is how I tell this story, whether they may not like it, they may, may or may not, but you will be relieved of perfectionism, doing it correctly. Is this right? It's your way in. And then I started thinking about, listen, it's so, it's so powerful because it's the narrative that we've all been on since humankind was born on this planet. You know, I, I started thinking about, I don't know if you saw this uh, Warner Herzog movie. I saw it many years ago when it came out, and it's called The Cave of Forgotten Dreams. You know that documentary? I highly advocate people watching it. It's so moving and powerful, and it's really beautiful. And basically, he, he went there with the film crew, and he examined the caves in, Chauvet, in the Chauvet Cave in southern France, which contains, it's a documented to be the oldest human uh, record of human paintings in a cave that we know of. And that's some 35,000 years old, those caves. It's so, if you can get your head around it, if you're watching it, you start to connect in the primalness of, like, the upper Paleolithic period. <laughs> That's how far back our stories have been told. But you know what? Somebody painting these amazing things on a cave, they're not identifying themselves as the actor, as the artist, as the poet. They're just telling stories. That's what we're doing. So why don't we just keep trying to expand beyond identifying us in labels that can really be limiting. And I thought, you know, it's just what people have been doing forever and ever. It's how culture really began and is carried on. And you know, I would go so far as to say it really is what keeps the human narrative alive. So that's how powerful you are and how ancient you are. So try it this week. You're at a restaurant. What do you do for a living? I'm a storyteller. So pretentious. No, it's not pretentious. It's not, no. I mean, can you imagine what kind of conversation you're going to have around that? Well, what does that mean? Let me end it with this, because this is how not pretentious it is. If you think about it, you are telling story the way you post your Instagram pic and filter it with the beige sepia tones. <laughs> That's storytelling. You were telling story by standing up at a Bernie Sanders rally. 
You were telling story to be brave enough in a talk back to share the things that you were going through. You were telling story to get up and go to an audition or in the work to be bravely who you are vis-a-vis -a, -vis a character. You're telling story getting married, getting pregnant, getting a divorce. You're telling story all the time through poetry and music and your own writings. It's not just the things that you do for a living. It's not just the things you identify with as a check mark of getting paid for. You're bigger than that. So I don't think it's pretentious at all. I actually think being an artist is maybe even more pretentious because that also can be limiting. And if somebody says, well, that's pretentious, say, you know what? Last I checked, for some odd millennium since, the, since a recorded man has been on the books, people have been doing that, telling story. The mediums have changed. Who knows, we could have all been sitting around a cave many, many lifetimes ago and been doing what we're doing now. The medium has changed, but it's in your DNA. I want you to try that this week. If you have an audition, go in and be a badass storyteller.